Hey developers, this is Code with Behram and in today's video I'm going to show you how to properly clone a Laravel app from GitHub and prevent the 500 server error. The frustrating 500 server error that usually occurs on live production websites when you deploy the Laravel app to the production or you are working on the local development environment, you usually face and once in a life you face the 500 server error and it's very frustrating error and when I was a beginner I also faced this error but I didn't find a specific video that shows how to solve this and that should explain what actually is the 500 server error. So in today's video I'm showing you how to solve it and I will also show you the most common errors that you will face while you clone a Laravel app from GitHub for the first time like the project or the app is not already present on your machine and you're cloning it from the github for the first time so without wasting time let's get started so first of all let me tell you what actually is the 500 server error so the 500 server error is not actually a specific error itself it occurs due to some error in your code and actually the 500 server error usually occurs when there is an error with the connectivity of your database or there is an error with the server of your development environment okay so i will show you how to solve this and i will also show you the common errors that occurs and i will also show you how to solve them as well so let's get started so first of all open a terminal i'm using mac so i'm using my terminal you can also use the iterm so first of all we will navigate to the root folder and then we will navigate to the XAMPP ASHI docs folder where usually the Laravel and PHP apps are present. So applications slash XAMPP slash htdocs. So now we are in the ASHI docs folder. So first of all, we will create a directory for cloning the project. So let's just name the folder clone project GitHub. And as you can see, we have the folder here. Let's navigate to the folder project and GitHub. So yeah, we are within the folder and as you can see, there is nothing in the folder. Okay, so now the second step is that open your browser and head to your GitHub account. After that, navigate to the repositories folder and here you can choose any repository that you like. Okay, so I'm choosing this one. So here, let's just clone this repository. So first of all, we will initialize this empty folder as an empty Git repository. So we will run the command git init that will initialize the empty Git repository. So after that, we will run the command git clone and we will type the URL of the repository. Okay, so we will navigate to the repository. And when you click on the code button here, drop down, you will see the URL. You can also use the SSH. I'm using simple HTTP URL. So copy this URL and head back to the terminal and paste it here. So as you can see, the repository has been cloned in our folder. Let's run the command ls. And as you can see, we have the repository in our folder. So let's navigate to the repository. And as you can see, we have all the folders and files of our Laravel app. So let me give you a small tip here. If you want to open this folder into the VS Code, just type code dot and it will open this folder into the VS Code. Let's just minimize this. And as you can see, the folder has been opened in the VS Code. So here, let's just open the terminal and run this Laravel app with PHP Artisan serve. As you can see, we have encountered our first warning, which is autoload.php file. Fail to open stream. This is a very common error that you will face when you first clone a project from the GitHub and you haven't created the autoload.php file. It just says that you don't have the vendor slash autoload.php file in your project. Actually, when we push a Laravel app to the GitHub, the vendor folder is not being pushed to the GitHub. So that's why it is not present here. So we will create a vendor autoload.php file. So for this, we will run the command composer install. If the composer install command is not being accepted, it will automatically tell you to run composer update, which will update the already installed dependencies and everything. This composer install command will also do the same thing. It will reinstall the dependencies and packages that is already present in the composer.json file. As you can see, we have all the packages and dev dependencies, but it will reinstall it. And it will also update the composer.json file. Let's press enter. As you can see, it has reinstalled and updated all the packages and dependencies. Let's create the terminal and again, run the command. The first error is being solved 
and the server is running it's a good sign let's just press on the command and click on the url and as you can see here is the famous 500 server error so how to solve this so as i told you in the beginning of the video that the 500 server error is not a specific error itself it is usually caused when there is a bad connectivity or error between the connectivity of your database with the server and it can be occurred by many things okay so the first solution to solve this 500 server error is that we don't have the .env file here actually the .env file is also not being pushed to the github when we upload the laravel app to the github okay so we have the .env.example file that contains all the necessary environment variables we don't have the .env file itself so we will create it we will run the command copy paste .env.example to .env so this command will copy and paste the contents of .env.example file and it will create the .env file and it will also paste the contents of .env.example file to the .env file let's just press enter and as you can see we have a file created named .env file let's just close the terminal and as you can see the contents here are now copied and pasted here okay so now we will also change the database name which is I think so on track let's just open the database let's just run the server and my sql i am using xamp if you are using vamp or mamp i don't know how to uh, run them uh, because i haven't used vamp or mamp for a while okay so let's just click on start all it will start the necessary servers and databases the mysql database it will start the mysql database and it will start the apache web server i don't need the pro ft tpd so it will not start this okay let's just minimize this and let's just check let's just refresh the page and as you can see our next error is now solved so now we just have to create the encryption key application encryption key so we don't have the encryption key let's just create it so so to create the application encryption key we have to run the command php artisan key generate so it will create and paste the application encryption key into the .env file. It is the base. It is a base64 unique key. So let's clear the terminal and again refresh the page. Okay, this error is also being solved. And now we just have to run the npm run dev because the wheat server is not running. So let's just run the wheat with npm install and and npm run dev. So npm install will reinstall all the packages and de dependencies in package.json file it will also update the version of the package.json file if it is outdated and it will also run the wheat for us okay so let's just click the enter and as you can see we have two errors one moderate and one high so to solve this let's run npm audit fix i think so npm audit fix so it will solve all the errors and vulnerabilities okay so let's just create the terminal and let's just refresh the page and as you can see our application is running fully fine so when i was a beginner i haven't found a specific video like this that will explain and show you how to solve all these errors so i did it myself and if you like the video subscribe to my channel keep supporting and stay tuned for more